In this video, we're going to fire up the Acer CloudBook 11 for the very first time. So let's get to it. Now, believe it or not, I've had this thing for probably about 10 days now, and I haven't fired it up yet. I did the unboxing video that many of you might have seen. If you didn't, there's a link at the end of this video that will link to a whole host of videos that I'm going to be posting on this device. But I haven't fired it up yet. And since this is my first Windows 10 device that I've purchased out of the box, I've had three other computers that I've upgraded to Windows 10, but this is the first device that I've had Windows 10 natively on. I thought I'd document it on this channel. So I'm going to fire up the device for the first time and take you through the process of you know how you set up a natively Windows 10 device for the very first time and uh, then we'll, I'll give you a couple of my first impressions of the device and then in future videos I will actually do a full review on the device also I will give you a camera test most likely tomorrow so again if you want to know any more about the this device just click on the link at the end of this video so let's open this thing up here and take a look inside now, if you saw my unboxing video, you'll know that I said that the build quality on this device is one of the better build qualities of a device in this price category, which is a sub $200 laptop. The list price, list price on this is $189, and uh, with tax and everything like that, I got it for just over $200 from the Microsoft Store. So, in this price category, this device has better build quality than, say, the Asus X205, which is another sub $200 laptop. Another thing that I noticed on the device is that the keys on the keyboard are a little bit smaller than you might be used to, but so far, you know, just judging by, you know, putting my hands and phantom typing on here, I've noticed that it's probably not going to be a problem, but I'll have a better idea of that when I actually use it on a regular basis. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use this as my primary laptop for the most part for the next week or two so I can get a better idea of how this device works in practice. So the first thing I want to do is remove this little sticker up here, which promotes Cortana. Let's see if I can get it off fairly easily. That's one thing that I haven't actually used on a Windows 10 device as of yet is Cortana because the two, I, like, like I said earlier, I've had uh, three Windows 10 computers. I have one that I actually use for my video editing and the other two I actually just upgraded those computers so I could sell them. So I haven't had a device that has a built-in microphone on it that I can actually take advantage of Cortana. And as you can see here, it says, ready to talk to Cortana. So first thing I want to do, I haven't plugged this in. I haven't charged it at all. I want to see if it has some sort of charge on it. So let me hit the power button, which is right over here. And it looks like there is no charge on it and that's fine. So what I'll do is I'll plug it in and we'll fire this up for the very first time. Okay, now we should be ready to go. You'll notice that the LED over here is an amber color. Now it turned white. So it should be charging up the internal battery in here. So let's press the power button here and fire this up. You'll notice that the power button lights up and we get Acer Explorer Beyond Limits. And it looks like you can see everything just fine there, so that's good. So you see the Windows 10 little circle there telling you that it's working, it's doing something. And the one thing I'm interested in knowing is if you do get that Windows 7 chime when you do turn on the computer for the first time, which I do get on my, uh, my editing PC because I did do an upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10. So it'll be interesting, again, to see what a native Windows 10 device does. So this looks familiar. Uh, if you've ever, you know, upgraded, my camera's getting a little crazy there. If you've ever upgraded to uh, Windows 8 or had a Windows 8 8.1 device or now Windows 10 device, apparently, everything, you know, this, this uh, startup sequence looks very familiar. So it basically wants to know where I'm from, United States. I'm speaking United States English. 
uh, the keyboard again United States and then it wants the time zone so I'm actually in the Eastern time zone which is the same as New York City and let's see if we can find that here there we go so far the trackpad seems very responsive and the click on it I like how it clicks so let's go over to next here again my my first impressions of this device is that you're getting a decent build quality for the price that you're paying so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to zoom in on the screen a little bit more because I'm looking at the camera you're not really getting a good you know view on what's going on the screen brightness is kind of darkening everything else out so there we go it's a little bit better there we have some legal stuff as they put it here so of course you're going to accept it if you want to use your computer you want to accept it so the next thing up is let's get connected so it has a bunch of Wi-Fi networks in my neighborhood here I'm going to sign into mine and I'll join you on the other side of that so being that the camera is basically right in front of this computer here I can't really get a feel for typing on the keyboard as of yet but so far my first impression is that the keys they don't feel cheap but they feel like keys that you'd get on a $200 computer but again the trackpad feels a little bit higher quality than other laptops I've, I've dealt with in this price category so the next step here is going fast basically it wants to know how you want to set this up if you want to use the express settings or if you want to go back now it looks like you can only use the express settings sometimes when you set up a PC you can do a customized setting but the only options here are back and use express settings so I'll use the express settings I would have done it anyway but again like I said sometimes you do have that option to do a customized setup on the PC so it's just setting everything up here and since this is a video that's dedicated to showing you exactly what happens when you set up a Windows 10 PC for the very first time I won't edit anything out but I might speed this up a little bit just for you know the the sake of, of not wasting your time so I'll probably speed some of this up in cases but I will show you everything throughout this process now I notice that the camera is sometimes losing focus at times I do apologize for that this camera I've had for quite a few years here on this channel and it might be time to upgrade it but uh, if I do upgrade it I want to get a really high quality camera so I might go for a Canon DSLR but that's not in the budget right now so again I just do apologize for the the loss of focus sometimes so basically the next step here is make it yours it wants you to uh, sign up for uh, an account through Microsoft now I do have a Microsoft account that has been associated with Windows 8 and 8.1 PCs in the past however you don't have to if you do not want to have a Microsoft account linked to your sign in on your computer you don't need to it's kind of I don't want to say it's hidden but it's not something that's you know you kind of have to read everything that's on the screen if you want to do that if you basically do not want to have a Microsoft account but you just want to have this PC that you sign into so you have your information here where you would put your email or your phone number if you have a Microsoft account and then your password uh, and then you would sign in here but down here there's a little option here that says skip this step so just know that that is an option for you you can have a Microsoft login or you can choose not to I don't think I'm gonna use my Microsoft login I'm just going to have this computer much like my editing PC so I'm gonna to go to skip this step here click on it and it's just going to do a traditional login to your computer so you would choose a username and then your password so you enter the password you re-enter the password and then you put a hint there so let me do that and I'll join you on the other side of that okay here we go setting up the computer here and this is something familiar to me when I've used Windows 8 8.1 devices and even when I set up my Windows 10 computers 
of course, it would be the same with a Windows, another Windows 10 computer here. Now, since I don't, since I didn't associate this with a Microsoft account, it shouldn't have to draw in a lot of apps. It should just do the basic apps that uh, are available on this device. And since this is a Signature Series laptop, because I bought it from the Microsoft Store, there shouldn't be any bloatware on this device at all. So there we go, Windows 10 on this device. And if you're a Windows 10 user, you know that this is your traditional user interface on this device. Although one thing that's interesting on laptops, I mean, you could do it on any Windows 10 device if you want, but on laptops, I think that it might be a good idea to use. You can have this tablet mode, which basically puts you into the tile interface right out of the gate. So this is what you're greeted with every time that you would fire up the computer. And then of course, if you just want to go to the desktop, you can do that. But this is where all of your apps, and that's basically, you know, the reason why it's called a tablet interface is because this is what you'd want to be greeted with when you're interfacing with the device with your finger. With, when, when you have the mouse and keyboard or the touchpad, whatever, you have a more fine point pointing device so, you know, you're able to interface with the desktop a little bit better. But I might try this out on the laptop here, try the tablet interface, even though this is not a touch screen. But just because of the things I would be doing on this computer, my workflow on this device is different than on my editing PC where I'm creating content for the vast majority of, you know, when I use that device. Whereas this, I might be consuming content, so the workflow or the use case is different, so I might want to try a different user interface on this. But as you can see, you have your, your live tiles here. I don't know if we can scroll through them because there's really nothing to scroll through here. But uh, you do have the option to go to your start menu here where you can bring up, you know, all your other apps and whatnot. And uh, again, everything is set up with the reverse scrolling. So if you're used to a traditional laptop where you scroll down to move the content up, this is that tablet mentality. So when you scroll down, it moves the content down. So it's just something that you have to get used to if you're not used to that kind of interaction with your touchpad. But so far, I'm really, you know, impressed with this touchpad. You know, you'll probably definitely be able to find better quality touchpads out there. But for this price category, that again is the thing that pops out to me. That and the build quality are the, are the two things that really do pop out to me as more than I would expect from a $200 laptop. Again, the keyboard, I'll have to get a little more intimate with it. I'll have to use it on a regular basis. But my first impression of the keyboard is... Yeah, that's that's a, you know, that fits for this price category. So, you know, it's your basic Windows 10 interface here. You do have your, you know, different menus that you can dive into here. And uh, if you don't like the tablet mode, you can always get out of it. And then you have your, if you want to go to your tiles, you just bring up your start menu here and you have access to everything there as well. But very responsive so far. I like what I see. Again, I can't go too in-depth on this because that will have to wait for the full review. But before I leave, let me just quickly bring up a website here. The Microsoft Edge browser here. I've tried to use Microsoft Edge browser on my editing PC just to get a feel for it because again that's the only PC that I have that has Windows 10 on it so that's the only one I can actually try the, the browser on and I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I do try and list some things on eBay and I tried to use the Microsoft Edge browser and I didn't find it as useful as Chrome. I'll still give it a try 
but you know it's a new browser hopefully they'll make improvements over time but one of the things I had difficulty with was you know highlighting let's see if I can do it here highlighting text I don't know if I can highlight I don't know if that's considered text let's see if we can find some text here that we can highlight so let's highlight this text here just highlight the word right and then I'm going to right click and then you have an option of selecting all copy or inspect element if you would do that within Chrome you could actually look it up or Google the the term so obviously I know what right means but let's just say it was a word I didn't know or something I wanted to look up on the internet again I'm using eBay as an example because if I wanted to look up specs on something and I had it written down I could just right click then hit Google term which obviously this would use Bing or whatever I'm, I'm not saying that it needs to use Google but there's no search option here where you can just go straight to a search and search for that term so you can again in my case with the eBay I could bring up the specs right out of the gate then copy and paste that right into my my eBay listing so that's one of the things that I found in my use case that really is just not there on the Edge browser that makes me want to go back to Chrome. Again, I'll try and use it. I want to give everything a fair shake because I want to be, number one, informed about what's out there. But number two, I want to see, you know, what new technologies are out there and, and you know, give it a chance. But it's just not a full-featured browser that I'm used to like with Google Chrome, but it is your default browser on this device. You can always download any browser you want. I don't know if you could put Internet Explorer back on this device. I have it on my editing PC because it was on there already and uh, it was transferred over. I'm sure you can put Internet Explorer on here. Maybe it is already on here. Let's see. I don't know. We could just search for it or we could go to the apps here. So at first glance, I don't see it here. I don't see Internet Explorer. Maybe it's in, you know, Windows Accessories. Yeah, it's right there. Okay, it's it's on the device here. You have to kind of dig for it. And again, they're you know they're trying to move away from Internet Explorer, so it makes sense. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Internet Explorer. I have to use it for my day job for one thing, but uh, mostly I just use Chrome. But again. That's more about the software that's on this device. I really want to focus on the hardware and give you an idea of if this is a good entry-level PC that you'd want to buy. Of course, last year was the debut of the sub-$200 laptops that ran Windows. This year is more the second generation of those devices, and this is the first that I know of of the second generation of those devices. And so far, I really like what I see. Again, there's no bloatware on it, so that might help. But that's going to do it for this one. So hopefully in about a week or two, I'll have a full review on this device. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to help out this channel, you can give me a thumbs up. You can favorite this video. You can share this video. You can leave me a tip on my YouTube page. Or you can actually join my Patreon, all of which is greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.